Hey everyone, okay so today you're gonna be getting a very very in-depth tutorial on contouring and highlighting and sculpting the face. So let's make a start. First thing I'm gonna do is clean face is just apply some moisturizer. Now my skin is a bit weird at the moment so it might be quite interesting to see how this looks on skin where there could be some form of texture, dryness, micro exfoliation, those kind of things. So I'm just applying a moisturizer just to aid in glide of the products to follow. Now with contouring and highlighting for me, I prefer to do it under foundation. I think it looks much more natural. The way that I like to do it, and I'll be doing it on my face, is I will be sculpting the face to best suit my face. And this is different for everybody. Your eye shape, your nose shape, everything will alter. So while I'll be as generic as possible, bear in mind this is for my face. <clears throat> I'm gonna use this little palette here of hard pressed concealers. Now these are very dry concealers and they're ultra pigmented. So and they're all ones from Laura Mercier's Secret Camouflage. So what I'm gonna do is start with the highlight shade. Now, anything you highlight will stand out at you. And even though I'll be blending this to the point where none of it is very, very visible, it's important that we highlight features on our face that we want to stand out. So here's a good example. Let me tilt my head down. I wouldn't want to apply highlighter anywhere near here because I have a bag there and anything light is going to draw attention to it. So I want to avoid certain areas on my face. So the first area I'm going to want to highlight is this inner corner, both inner corners. There's darkness here and also it looks nice when it's highlighted and it stands out. Also, when I smile, it doesn't move. Another area that doesn't move on me is this outside corner of my eye. So right here and here. When I smile, that bit doesn't crease. So I'm going to apply a bit here just on that side. I'm going to avoid all this area. I'm also going to highlight this section here of my forehead. As we get older, the foreheads can sort of flatten out and that's a good area for me. I'm also going to just take a little bit down the sides of the nose because this area looks quite nice when highlighted. And as you'll see in a minute, when I smile, this bit doesn't crease up or wrinkle either. So with regards to the cheekbones, what I want to do is look for areas that aren't creasing and just apply a little bit of highlight to those areas. These are the areas that I want to come forward more. And I'm just going to take a little bit along the lip area as well. I'll blend out in a second. That will be very important. The next thing we're going to do is look at the deeper shades, the areas we want to kind of recess away from us. So, you know, generally speaking, our contour shades. Now, if you were just to do this with a regular foundation and you were trying to be very subtle, I would go one shade lighter or darker. But this is for demonstration purposes and just because I'm able to blend relatively well. OK, so next we're going to move on to the contour shade. So I need to look at my face and think, well, where would I like more dimension? Now I've got a man's face, so I want it to kind of sharpen it, this area. So I can actually see the indent. So I really want to move the product in this kind of way because it just makes more sense for my face shape. And this will give a more angular effect to the face. And it isn't always the most beautiful look on a female because it's a very sharp look. So you should bear that in mind. Also, I have a beard here, so I don't need to contour any of this area. The other area that I think is worth contouring for me is this area right here, going through the tail of the brow, right the way up to the hairline and the temple because this area for me is a little bit um, puffy and we could minimize some of this puff by contouring it just by doing that. And it doesn't have to be completely accurate because you're going to blend it, but just by adding some color here, 
I'm going to help to push back a little part of that eye. I'm also going to just dot just around the forehead and I've talked about it before but the easy way to decide if you need to contour your forehead is to take your fingers. If you can only put two fingers here and then there's your hairline, you don't want to contour your forehead. Three, contour them just above it and four like me, you can just contour the whole lot. Now before I go in and do anything else, I can't leave it like this because the concentration of these pigments is too strong. And if I was to use a foundation over this, I'd have to use a lot to cover it. And I don't want to look ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is take my finger and I'm going to start to move the product around the area that I was contouring. And I might find that I need more product. See, it's pretty much gone. But that's what we want. We're using this as a watercolor. And it's important that we use it as such and not try and use it in its full capacity and full pigment payoff because it will look mental and you don't want to look mental. Since I've started with the contour shades, I'll keep on. And I know I haven't done my nose yet. I will do in a second. And you're just taking away the bulk of the shadow and you're going to be blending it and extending it with that. So bear that in mind. That's why the lines were relatively thin. You're just blending it away. And now for the nose, I'm just going to do a standard straight down. And I need to be relatively careful here. The reason being is because, let me bring this bloody mirror forward. The reason being is because we've also got light here as well. And then I'm just going to take it and just kind of pat it and press it in order to shade this. I don't want to bring it too far down. Okay. So if anything, I'm moving it up rather than down. Then I'll just clean off my hands and we'll start to work on the highlighted areas, filling in these gaps, just smoothing it out. And I can see so, yeah, so I've got some textural issues going on here with dry skin. That will make the application more problematic because there's micro exfoliation going on there, but that's fine, we'll deal with it. Now I'm going to blend in this inner highlight and just move it out. However, when it comes to this section here, right in the middle, I'm going to leave that here pretty intense. And you'll notice that these have a yellow tone to them. They're just overall more brightening. Just blend it. And the same thing here. Just going to pat and press to get the general kind of gist. Pat and press. And here. See how splendid that is? So you can still see where they work. Now it's quite clear to me that I need to put a little bit more just along this forehead area, just to bring it down slightly. And I've also got to bring it up just a little. Now, because we've sheared this out, that means that the job of the foundation is really just to mask some of these areas lightly. I don't need to use the thickest, fullest coverage foundation that I can find because it's not necessary. So next we're going to absorb some of this filth and then we'll move on to foundation. Okay, so I've taken a tissue wrapped in a little triangular sponge and I'm just going to pat and press this over my face to absorb any of the excess oils coming from the products that I've just used. They'll interfere with longevity and I don't want that. And I forgot to blend here. And you see, it just takes off a little layer. The next thing we're going to do is start the foundation process. So I'm going to want two foundations, really, a slightly lighter one and one that's more my own shade. The lighter one for the interior parts and the deeper one for the exterior. I'm going to use a cream foundation and I'm going to use a really small amount. So knocking it off on the back of my hand, I'm going to start on the inner corner where there's the highlight and I'm patting it in this stippling motion. I'm not doing this. So you're just taking the product 
and just patting it into the skin. Your goal here is to have the highlight still be visible, but not so much that it's glaring. I'm just going to tap it on this section right up here and then right on the forehead. Not too much. And a little bit down here. Now I'm going to use a slightly deeper foundation on the rest of the face. So I'm just going to start on the sides of the face, moving it in. I'm going to start here on the outside corner of the temple and bring it up. And remember, you're trying to create dimension on the skin. You aren't trying to have these severe lines, this severe contouring. And even though the final result will look quite subtle, you'd be amazed at the kind of lift that it can give the skin when done really well. So you're just patting it and pressing it and stippling it over those areas that you just did. Make sure that everything is as covered as possible. And then when it comes to the nose, I want to, I've got light here. I want to just move the product up. So you're just pushing the product up rather than bringing that dark down. I'm just stippling over the entire nose as well. Now I'm going to need to just take my finger, just really make sure that this inner highlight is blended. And you can then address the skin and say, hello skin. <clears throat> is there anything else I need to do here to further enhance what's going on? Do I need extra highlight as an example? Well, yes, I think I do. Right on this inner corner again. I want this area to be slightly brighter. And I'm just going to use that stippling brush with whatever's left on it just to add a touch more light there. And this time I am kind of wiggling it in place, just taking it over the eye. Hand and press. Now we're going to take our sponge again and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to absorb any excess product over the eyelids, everywhere on the face, everywhere. And all we've done here is added dimension to the face. We've just subtly added dimension. So now I want to powder things. So I'm going to use a translucent powder. I don't want a powder with color in because I've got color on the skin and I just don't want to, I don't need any extra. So I'm going to just start to pat and press. You could have also, if you wanted here, used a cream blusher at this point. I'm not going to for this tutorial, but you can. And I'm just going to pat and press everything. So make sure that everything is set. And what we'll be doing in a second is reinforcing certain areas of the face with color and bronzer. And that's set fine. So now what I want to do is take a bronzer and just reintroduce some key areas. So I'm going to take my bronzing palette in light gold and I'm going to take the bronzer shade, which is the warmer shade. The reason I'm using the warmer shade is because the contour shade is a true contouring shade, but I've already done the true contouring aspect of it. So now I want to add a bit more warmth to the face so that it doesn't look cold and it doesn't look hard. And I'm going to just very lightly remember those areas where I added that kind of contour powder or contour cream and just bronze those up ever so slightly and then knock off anything else and just gently buff over the highlight area just so that the transition is smoother. When it comes to the contouring side of things here, I'm just going to really kindly 
really kindly and then in circular motions not too extreme on this portion because I don't want it to look too too done and then right here in the outside corner of the eyes I'm just going to go into the temple area just to join it because this is where we added it I am not going to contour the nose with this because it would be too much but what I will do is add a touch of the bronzer right here where we connected to the brow and I'm going to use the faintest amount and it's just so that the brow isn't floating that it's meeting something it's quite subtle but it kind of works so now we want to add a little bit of color to the face so I'm going to start with blusher and I'm going to apply a little bit of blusher up nice and high onto the cheekbone nice and high up because I've gone for angular contouring I want to kind of mimic that effect here as well so bringing it up nice and high onto the cheekbone area and I'm just going to take that powder puff and just go over that blush to push it into the skin and just to soften the edges Take it up a little bit higher here and again I'm just going to pat and press it in. Now blusher is one of those things that you either really love or don't. I do. I'm just going to apply a touch just above the bridge of the brow, the bridge of, yeah, the brow bridge right here. Just a little touch and a touch across the nose and if you don't have a beard, touch across the chin and a touch across the throat. Then I'm going to take my powder puff again, just go over everything. Now all that's left is to do a touch of highlighter. When it comes to highlighter, you really want to err on the side of caution because there are the, the general gist is that we should apply highlighter to our cheekbones, right? And that makes sense. But if you look straight on at me, I need to avoid certain areas of my face. And this is sort of where a highlighter would go. But I need to really be applying highlighter very strategically because otherwise it's going to encroach upon these areas that I don't really want to make that much attention to come to because they're just, they're not that flattering. So I'm going to sort of start here. And this is where I think it looks, highlighter looks quite nice. It's right here. I'm just going to pat it in with my finger. I only want a spot of it and then I'm going to take a bro the powder puff and just make sure that it's pressed into the skin it's not too extreme I'm obviously not going to highlight the tip I'm going to take a little touch of that highlighter right above the arch of the brow and then with that same powder puff and the reason I'm doing that is I'm pushing in the translucent powder over the highlighter as well so that it isn't too extreme because I, I don't need it to be really strong then with a nice big brush this is my number four brush and I'm going to take some of that highlighter and I'm going to pop it kind of right here it's quite subtle but that's where I want it I want it right here right at the top of that kind of blush at the back because that way it's not going to interfere with any of these areas here that I don't want to I don't want to stand out because it isn't going to be flattering I'm using the bloody wrong side of it now and then I'm just going to reintroduce that again right here pat and press over it pushing it into the skin and the same thing and pat it and push it into the skin nothing's going to be touched here obviously now what I'm going to do is just give a little comb through of the brows get rid of some of these these definitely need a little cutting just fill them in slightly to frame the face a few things that are left to do is I just want to include and I want to just use a touch more loose powder just in the t-zone I just want to include 
a couple of beauty spot, uh, spots, a couple of beauty spots just to finish off this look. So I'm going to take my deep nude eye pe uh, lip pencil and I'm just going to look at the face and think where would it look quite nice to have a beauty spot. We're just going to pick right here and I'm just going to push it into the skin and then with my finger I'm just going to blend it in slightly. Adding back a couple of beauty spots to the face just makes the face look more real and I just think it looks so much more beautiful when there is a couple of these just poking through. And I'm just going to go over it with my powder puff. And it just gives a bit more realism to the face. And just to finish it off, we'll do a spritz of spray. Now a tiny bit of setting spray, two squirts, and then in a V. And it just takes away some of that matte tone. And now you can do whatever you want. Do your lips, do the most subtle eye. Whatever you wish to do, you can. And all we've done here is given ourselves a touch more dimension to our face. So it's not all flat and all one tone. It isn't something that I would do on a daily basis, but it is something I would do for a client if they were looking to subtly enhance their features and they just love that contouring and highlighting aspect of it. This would be a really great way. But otherwise, I mean, this looks, this looks natural. It doesn't look overly done. You wouldn't have known there was all those lines all over the face because it's been blended in well and it's been blended in sheerly and kindly and we haven't tried to over contour and over sharpen features that didn't exist to begin with. Thanks for watching. It was a long video, but I appreciate your time. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Bye bye.